This series of films preserves the stories of the people who helped make a difference to Blind Avon. The town's history is all about people, but like much of history, not everyone's story gets told. This project explores the lives of everyday people, as well as the well-known characters. During the production, we have researched unique characters and learned how they helped create and improve Blind Avon. Our films are based in the Victorian period, despite Queen Victoria's lifetime being between 1837 and 1901. But in history, it covers 1820 to 1914. This period saw Blind Avon undergo huge changes, which greatly influenced the future. We hope that these films help others to discover more about the UNESCO World Heritage Site and town of Blynavon. One moment, one moment. And there. Sorry about that, but we must finish the paragraph, mustn't we? As a woman in the late 1800s, let's just say our opportunities can be a little limited, but we must persevere, ladies. Anyway, my name is Mildred Davis, and I was born right here in Blenavon. In fact, number 74 Broad Street. Not a bad place to be brought up, really. And I helped my father, Henry Morgan Davis, with the family business as a chemist. Here, we sell all different types of health beneficial medicines such as lemon soap, chloridine and toiletries. Most medicines are herbal and are really good for everyone. Lots of workers had lung problems and injuries from the pits, so we were always very busy. My dad was born in 1849 in Cardigan and moved to Blenavon in the 1870s. He was also the town's dentist. There were a few screams while he pulled the teeth, that's for sure and I learned a lot about medicine, which was good really, as my poor father passed away in 1934. What a sad, sad loss. You wouldn't believe this, especially in my day, but luckily I got to take over the chemist, which was pretty unheard of during this time. Pretty rebellious, I must add. Now I can fulfill my dreams of becoming a businesswoman. I like to think I set an excellent example for women across Wales by being a leading lady in business. I hope in your day and age it's much different. Many of the townspeople were really grateful for what I provided. I have to say I was delighted when they created the NHS. So many more people could benefit from free prescriptions. So there you are, I helped in the chemist. My dad died, took over the chemist and became a strong, independent businesswoman. Oh, what became of this wonderful establishment? Maybe it will become like some sort of hub for young people. Who knows? Anyway, go away. I want to go back to reading my book in The Chemist. I'm a busy lady, you know. I was born in Froome, Somerset in 1846. My life's journey led me to a vibrant place called Blenavon. As a skilled tradesman, I arrived here with the skills of a plumber, painter and house decorator. Little did I know that destiny had more in store for me than just wielding a paintbrush and fixing pipes. In 1874, a significant opportunity presented itself and I gladly embraced the role of manager at the Blenavon Gas and Waterworks. As this town flourished during the Victorian era, I oversaw the expansion of these essential utilities, bringing gas to illuminated streets and shops. It was a time of progress and change, and I was proud to contribute towards the development of this community. But beyond the realm of pipes and gas, my heart beat strongly with political fever. A loyal support of the Liberal Party, I immersed myself in the affairs of this town. I served on Blenavon Urban District Council, where I held the role of chairman for six years. I sat as a magistrate at Blenavon Court 
You're in cases affecting the town and the tradespeople, and I represented the town on the abog of any board of guardians, administrating poor relief to those who needed it. Reginald McKenna, the esteemed Liberal Member of Parliament for North Monmouthshire, found in me a staunch ally, and together we worked to bring progress and positive change. I was also known for my gift of public speaking, and on numerous occasions, I stood before crowds at the Workmen's Hall, addressing them with passion and conviction. Never one to bow before the powerful and pompous, I stood tall and resolute, guided by my conviction. But alas, my mortal journey came to an end, and in 1911, I bid farewell to this world from my own Beechwood on Carmarthen Road. My wish as a ghost from the bygone days is for you to carry forth the values I held dear, stand up for what you believe in, be true to yourselves, and be a beacon of light for your community. Engage in the affairs of this town, for you are the architects of its future. I see you're admiring the Blenavon Workmen's Hall. It's lovely, isn't it? But did you know it wasn't always there? Who am I, you ask? I'm Walter Henry Hughes, born in 1859 at your service. I'm a tailor, yeah. I know my clothes are good. We based in Blenavon, Broad Street, and really love this town. However, I'm not also sure it was always that great for the workers of the town. Well, I was very concerned that the institute only created for the rich elites in the Blenavon's society and not the regular working man. People should have a fair share of education and leisure facilities, no matter what their background, but this wasn't the case. But I wanted to change this. When I was only 24, I gathered the workmen of Blenavon together to secure an agreement to demand the, the necessities they really wanted. They wanted more education and places to relax and recover from their rough and dangerous days down the mines and ironworks. To, to this, the workmen agreed to self-fund the project by weekly deductions from their wages. That just means taking a half penny out of their weekly wage to go towards this scheme. I then took this proposal to John Walton, the general manager of the, the works, the big boss, and you know what? He and the Blenavon Company gave their support for this scheme. They promised to turn the shop in Lyon Street to become a the new Blenavon Workmen's Institute. Not bad for a 24-year-old liberal chapel preacher from Blenavon. Yeah, I've always done my own thing. I guess you could say I'm, I'm a bit of a rebel. And would you believe this? The Blenavon Workmen's Institute was a smashing success. So much so that the Institute was overflown with people. It simply wasn't big enough and was so overcrowded they had to expand. So, in 1893-94, we got bigger and better with a new workman's hall built right at the bottom of High Street. I can see it's still there, wow. Over the hundred years later, people are still enjoying the wonderful shows and entertainment there. Hopefully it's there for another hundred years to come. Anyway, I'd better get going. I got more clothes to make and more shows to see. Got to make sure they enjoy the show and the clothes. Goodbye. Ah, uh, Blanavon, the place of my birth. I'm guessing it looks a bit different now compared to when I was born in 1876. Guess I'm old now. I was born in what they call the working class. The Victorians liked social classes clearly defined. There are three classes. The working class, such as me, who worked in an industry, which wasn't a very pleasant place to work. The middle classes, 
like the works managers and the upper class, like those who sit in the House of Lords. It was a hard life as a working man, very hard, with terrible working conditions underground, in the mines and in the ironworks. People were hungry. It was a hard, tough life with toxic gases and air going into my body every day. Disease was rampant and lung disease was commonplace. My eyes were strained for days after coming out from the dark mines. I was 14 years of age when I went down the mine, not as old as some of my friends. What were you doing at 14 years of age? Not down the mine, I'm sure. I was a coal miner hewer and would loosen the coal from the bed. Tough work. By the time I reached 34, I was a colliery check weigher. I checked the weight of coal dug by the men underground. I was in charge of making sure the workers got their fair pay by the end of the week. I was a strong believer that working class people should be able to educate themselves, read and write at least. I was a trade unionist and became secretary of the Blenheim District of the South Wales Miners' Federation. The trade union is an organisation that represents people that work in a particular industry, and in this case, the colliery. I then joined the Labour Party too. I thought it was very important to be a socialist. What's that I hear you ask? Socialism is a political philosophy and movement that aims to make people equal and have equal wealth. Housing reform became a cause close to my heart. Living conditions weighed heavily on my soul. I fought private landlords like the Blenheim Company who were content to let people live in squalor. Council housing became my vision, a way to improve the lives and health of those who had suffered far too long. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Blanham's first council houses at Allgood Avenue were the result of my hard work. They were the first of many. I won a scholarship for Ruskin College, Oxford, and studied sociology and economics. I went on to become a civil servant and eventually became the Chief Conciliation Officer at the Ministry of Fuel and Power. I could now influence labour relations across the UK. As the years passed, my journey took me beyond the town's borders. The fact I started life as a miner to get an OBE proves that if you're passionate and you work hard, you can achieve anything. Hello there. My name is Sarah Hopkins. This is strange, isn't it? What year is this? I'm guessing Queen Victoria is not on the throne anymore. I certainly hope women have more rights than we did back in my day. Did you know, as a woman in the 19th century, I couldn't own property. And if I were to marry, all of my money would go to my husband. Rude. I didn't want to marry anybody, and I really wanted to do lots of charity work. My brother, Samuel Hopkins, and part of Blenavon Ironworks. How amazing is that? My brother was a good man, and our family tried to help the community the best we could. We supported a lot of small schools, which were in cottages in Little Quick and Bunkers Hill, Blenavon, and at a larger building in Prince Street, which was near the bottom of town, close to St. Peter's Church. What a wonderful church that is. In fact, my brother built that church. It's magnificent. The church made use of iron and was incorporated into the church in many ways. What an amazing man he was. Unfortunately, my dear brother passed before he could fulfill his dream of making a school for the local children. He would have loved this place. So I, Sarah Hopkins, took up the cause. And how did I do this, I hear you ask? So, I pulled out my quill, I still like using my quill, 
and wrote a letter to the National Society for the Promotion of Religious Education. Because I want to build a school. And guess what? I helped his dream come true. Our wonderful local builders came in and helped build my school. And it opened on the 15th of April, 1816. Wait. That's over 200 years ago. Gosh, I've got wrinkles. Doesn't time fly? We had 120 young needy pupils, boys and girls, aged around 6 to 12. If you were there and you worked in our ironworks, you could have joined too. And guess what? It was one of the earliest schools built in Wales by an industrial employer. And it was free. We valued our workforce and wanted to give your children the opportunity to learn. It didn't matter if your parents worked in our mines, ironworks or brickworks, we wanted you there. I love seeing the pupils of our school when I visited and I encouraged good behaviour. I wasn't too keen on punishment, but they must behave. For those who did behave, I would reward them with clothing and praise for all their hard work. In fact, I'm not supposed to have favourites. But Lewis Browning, who was in my school, won multiple prizes for his wonderful work and I kind of liked him. Lewis went on to become one of the Navin's greatest historians. It's because of people like him that I'm able to tell you my story today. Anyway, I must dash. I'd better go down to the school for my surprise visit. Not bad for a woman in the Victorian age. So my, I was born in the art of Cardigan in West Wales in 1849. I lived in Ponypool for a while, but it's a wonderful town of Blenavon that stole my art. Ah, oh, Blenavon, a place of industry and innovation, where the clang of steels mingled with the harmonies of my singing voice. Upon my arrival in 1879, I established myself as a chemist, druggist and dentist on Broad Street where potions and lectures lined my shelves, providing remedies for all ailments. I was the first chairman of the Blenava Urban District Council. I was a leader within the community. I led the Urban District Council, which went on to provide many, many improvements to the town. Among these, we made improvements to the sanitation, sewerage and refuse collection. Yeah. Imagine a world without that. It also made it possible to build new housing, new roads, and generally improve the town. Being the first chairman of the Chamber of Trade in 1897, I was active in the town for many years, which held events such as the Steadford. I performed in the first Christmas at Steadford in 1895. Yes, I was a very busy man. On top of being the chairman of the Urban District Council and Chamber of Trade, I was also deacon of the English Baptist Church, a local magistrate at the Courts of Law, and even a committee man at the Blenavon Workingmen's Institute. Busy, busy, busy. You might have heard of my old friend, Walter Henry Hughes, about the Blenavon Workingmen's Institute. Marvellous man, with a marvellous old did you know I oversaw the building of the bigger, better Workermen's Hall in High Street in 1893-1894? And would you know it, I was proudly asked to represent the Council at the grand opening of the Workmen's Hall in 1895. It was a fantastic day. Oh, I remember it well. Definitely one of my fondest memories. Even as time carried me forward, my legacy lived on through my daughter, Mildred. She stood beside me in my shop, eventually taking the reins of my businesses and continuing our family journey of service to Blenavon. Anyway, can't stay long, but I can see Blenavon has done well for itself. Farewell Blenavon, until the next time. Have you seen how bad the roads are in the 1800s? 
if there's any at all. Okay, so I wasn't born in Blenheim, I was born in Breckenshire. In 1809, give or take, when I was 21, I moved to Blenheim when I became a draper. I used to sell textiles and fabrics. But when I came to Blenheim, I couldn't believe the roads here were not fit for any vehicle. Yes, we have five chapels here, just four shops, and in fact, more public houses than shops. And very few cottages, which were southeast of the ironworks. I wanted to make Blenheim a bigger and better place. I wanted to make it suitable for vehicles. Improvement, improvement, improvement. So, what could I do, I wondered. By 1840, Blenheim welcomed its first regular covered market. Covered? Why covered? Have you seen the rain in Wales? And this is summer. Oh, by the way, it's in Market Street today, named after my covered market. Oh, it was well supplied with excellent local meat, vegetables, earthenware. I think it was the breaking away from the truck system. But I wasn't done yet. I decided to persuade the authorities to approve the creation of Broad Street, which still exists today. Whenever today is, linking the ironworks with the new market through King Street. Anyway, within a few years, I also opened up the town's first brewery. I tell you what, the workers like that, which was also in Market Street. I also supplied the town with a reservoir and gas works, both of which were used to provide water and gas to many parts of the town. I demanded the local politicians improve the roads to Blenavon and provide adequate street lighting. No, I didn't stop there. Of course I didn't. I opened the town's first hall, proudly lighting it with four chandeliers, utilizing the gas supply from my works. I also built the Red Lion Hotel around the 1860s. I think it's still standing, but I was also an inventor. I like to multitask. I invented a way of removing unwanted methane gas from collieries. Dangerous stuff, that. Very flammable. Caused lots of explosions. It was Blaine Avon's own serial killer. Queen Victoria would have been proud of my accomplishments. So there we are. I like to think that I was mostly responsible for making Blaine Avon what it is today. Unfortunately, around about 75 years of age, I died. If you ever venture down to St. Peter's graveyard, take a look at my resting place. It looks pretty good. Hello, my name is David Watkins and I am 10 years old. This is my friend Evan Evans. We grew up together. Our families knew, know each other well. Our fathers worked together in the ironworks. Gosh, that's hard work and really long hours. They only get Sundays off and we all go to chapel three times a day. Then we walk about town in our Sunday best. Sometimes I think I'm showing off a bit. As my father works in the ironworks, I can go to Miss Hopkins school. I'm really lucky, as not all children can go to school. I didn't really like her at first, as we're only allowed to speak English. I found it hard learning a new language, but I get it by now. I'm learning, reading, writing and arithmetic. My mum and dad can't read or write very well. Mind you, they know their Bible well enough and always quote from it, especially if I've been a bit Naughty. My mum and da didn't have the chance to go to school. They were working from about the age of eight. That's why they were certain that I would go. They didn't want me working so young and hoped that I can get a better job with my education. I'm not sure what work I'll do, but hope it's not as hard as my da has to work. I get a bit scared when there's been a problem at his works, as a lot of people get injured. We live with my tadki and mamgi. I won't be able to go to school 
if we didn't have their help. That's why I have to try hard at school and learn as much as I can. I really hope I can get a good job and can help all of my family. I really hope my children don't have to go to work at a young age and that they can go to school. Good morning. My mum says I should always greet people correctly, so good morning to you all. My name is Evan Evans. David is my best buddy. We used to play a lot together when we were younger, always running about the place. But that's changed a bit now as I have to work. David's really lucky he can go to school. I know he doesn't always like going and wanted to come to work with me when I started but we both know deep down that school is better than having to go to work so young. This is me dressed up in my Sunday best. I've only got one good set of clothes and have to wear them to go to chapel. My mom would go mad if I got them dirty. My dad works in the iron works with David's father, but I couldn't go to school as my mom and dad couldn't afford not to have my wages coming in. My dad took me out for a walk after chapel one Sunday and had to explain to me that whilst iron workers' children could go to Miss Hopkins' school, we as a family couldn't afford to miss any wages I could make, as we needed the money. I've got one sister and three brothers, all younger than me. My dad explained that he started working at when he was nine years old and I was needed to help with the family by working. It was what he had to do as a boy and so did his father. So I guess it runs in our family now. My mum was upset when I started working, but she knew there was no other choice. I did feel proud going to work with my dad. I felt like a grown up, but that wore off as the weeks became months and the work so, was so hard. It makes me feel a bit better thinking that my brother, younger brothers and sister may be able to go to school when they get older. I am glad to see that the education system is a lot better for children now. My name is Sean Price, I'm eight years old. This is my best friend Megan Jones. We live next door to each other in King Street. We're always in and out of each other's houses. Megan goes to school, I can't because my dad is out of work. It's tough for us as a family. I could have gone to school, but my dad had a bad accident at the mine and can't work. It's only children of parents who work in the company works that can go to the school. It's a shame really as I see Megan going off to school and I have to stay home and help my mum and Mangi with lots of chores. My mum and Mangi take in a lot of washing. I have to help with this. I hate the sheets because they're so big. It takes ages to get them cleaned. My hands are red all the time from having to help with this washing. I also help to look after my dad who is so poorly. He can't get out of bed. I would love to go to school a lot of the girls in school go on to become teachers. They have this thing when pupil, a pupil who has been attending schools reach about 11 to 12 and they can become a pupil teacher, a bit like an apprenticeship scheme. I could have become a pupil teacher. I think I would have been good as a teacher as I'm always looking after my brothers and sisters. Yes, life is tough and I hope things will change. Hello, Shamai. My name is Megan Jones. I'm nearly nine years old. I'm getting big now. I think you've just been hearing from my best friend, Sean. I'm really lucky because I get to go to St. Peter's school. I love it there. I've been learning a lot. I can now read and write and do a bit of math. The reading really helps with the Bible studies, which 
we also have to do. They've been teaching us girls what they call domestic skills. It's all about how to sew and how to be a good housewife. I think they think we're all gonna get married. I don't mind getting married later on, but it would stop me from being a teacher. I love learning and I'm hoping I can get to become a pupil teacher. I have a couple of years yet, but I am trying really hard with my studies. I'd love to become a teacher, but if I get married, can you believe I would have to stop? They don't let married women be teachers. It's such a waste of all of the education and hard work I will have done. To have got so far and then to have to give it up. How bad is that? But I guess that's when all the domestic skills I have learnt will come into play. How to be a good housewife. The only thing I don't like is that teachers are very strict. I've even seen them cane a few boys. David always seems to be in trouble. He gets caned a lot. I think he's used to the pain. If I get to be a teacher, I wouldn't be like that. I wouldn't use the cane. A lot of pupils have it hard enough as it is without the school punishing them. I help my friend Sean when I can with her reading, but we don't have much time as she has to help her family so much. I have to help my family, but not as much as poor Sean.